Today, I'll show you how to stick to a fitness routine without sacrificing time. I've trained for over nine years, worked with hundreds of clients, and read dozens of fitness articles so that you don't have to. This approach has several amazing benefits. You'll be able to look good, feel energized, more confident, live longer, and attract respect from the people around you. I've experienced growth in all aspects of my life when I started strength training. My income, my health for obvious reasons, my relationships with others, and an unshakable confidence. Begin your self-improvement journey with fitness. I went from skinny fat and weak to Greek god physique. Pushing yourself physically translates to mindset, business, and relationships. This was my foundation for everything else I achieved. Each rep has a compound effect on life. Unfortunately, most people complicate fitness, including the fitness industry. They keep you confused by promoting gimmicks and tricks in order to get you to keep buying into their supplements, their programs, or shortcuts. I believe this is why many people never stick to a program long enough in order to see some realistic and sustainable results. The overcomplication makes them complacent, unmotivated, and ultimately burnt out. The problem is that there's too much resistance between you and your workout routine. More friction between you and the activity makes it a lot easier to skip. This is common among many other reasons. Not enough time, progressing too slow, quitting too soon, lack of knowledge, no support or accountability. Most of these can be eliminated with the right mindset and the proper systems. By the end of this video, you're gonna learn how to overcome each one and have a framework for sticking to your fitness program. I'll also outline an example program that you could follow and get started with today. Quick disclaimer, I'm not a doctor or dietitian, so check with your medical professional before you get started on any exercise program. Step one is to have a specific goal. It's important to have a clear idea of why you're even working out in the first place. Are you coming to the gym to build muscle, to lose fat, improve your running endurance, or maybe to have more energy to play with your kids or nephews? Having a specific goal and reason directs your focus on a day-to-day -day basis, especially when you don't feel like going. Without these two components, you're like a wild horse with no master to tame it, and you're going to end up quitting again. Let's use a quick example to show you what I mean. We would like to set specific days that you're gonna work out, the times, the exercises, and potentially how long your workout is gonna last. To keep it simple, let's say that your goal is to build muscle. So a clear goal would be something like this. I'm going to train three days a week on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 11 a.m. for 45 minutes with Brand Mars's beginner plan. Ideally, you'll have a plan like this laid out for you so when you get to the gym, you know exactly what to do and you're not showing up confused, wasting time and energy. Don't worry if you don't have a plan right now, I got you covered at the end of this video. Step two is to record your progress. Seriously, write down what you do. Remember quitting last time because you weren't seeing any progress? This right here is your lifeline. Listen closely. You will first make progress on paper before you make progress in the mirror. Physical changes take time and fitness is hard to get into, no doubt. If it were easy, everyone would be in shape, but the opposite is true. The majority of the population are fat, sick, and overweight, but not you for long because you track your progress. Let's take a minimal example. It's Monday and I'm performing a bench press for 95 pounds. You might be asking, how many reps do I do? How many sets? How fast do I do the repetitions? How long do I rest? This can be as simple or as complicated as we want to make it. There's often too many variables to consider, but for the sake of building muscle, let's set a simple baseline. 
For example, for bench press, let's start with two sets of 8 to 12 reps with 90 second rest intervals and 3 to 4 second tempo for each direction. You can use this as your baseline and adjust it over time. So what do you do next week? You can follow this simple protocol of progressive overload to make progress on a week to week or a workout to workout basis. This is one of my favorite fitness frameworks for progression. Find a minimalist program, add reps first, then add sets. Finally, add weight, repeat for six to eight weeks. Repeat to fit your current goal, works every time. Remember that starting small is super important. Even if it seems too easy, that's the point. Make it so easy that it's hard to fail. You want to be able to ingrain the habit first. Step number three is to start with a minimalist approach. Six workouts a week for two hours? Slow down. Think for a minute. Can you fit that time slot into your busy schedule? Is this something that's sustainable for six months to a year? Is it sustainable for the rest of your life? Once you reach your goal, you still have to maintain it. But I have good news. In order to maintain fitness level, it doesn't take as much work as it did to gain that level of fitness. Pick a time of day that has the least amount of friction to get to. If your workout only takes 30 minutes and you wake up two hours before your workday, have all your clothes ready at the door as a part of your morning routine. Another good option is to work out at home. You can get an effective workout in with little to no equipment. You just need to know how. Here's a list of equipment that I recommend. Adjustable dumbbells, a pull-up bar, resistance bands, a suspension trainer or TRX, an adjustable bench. These aren't completely necessary, but they open up a wide variety of exercises to choose from. Step four is to choose exercises that work multiple muscle groups. People usually get this wrong when they go to the gym by going to the dread mill and doing endless amounts of crunches hoping that their belly fat will melt away. These exercises have their place but they're far from optimal. If we're trying to optimize for time, we want to choose exercises that have the best bang for our buck. Multi-joint compound exercises solve this. These hit two muscle groups or more during the same movement. For example, a squat will target the quadriceps, which are the muscles of your front thigh, and the hamstrings, the muscles of the back of your thigh, and your glutes, which is your butt. There are a few others, but these are the ones people usually want to grow or tone. Focus on these types of exercises and you can get more done in less time. Some people will use the leg extension machine till they're blue in the face. This exercise only works the quadriceps muscle and these are often called isolation exercises because they only work a single joint or muscle group. All exercises have their place, but remember, we're looking for the best return on our investment. An example of a good full body workout would include exercises for the upper, the lower body, and the trunk. Here's an example of some of those exercises. The leg press, the hamstring curl, the chest press, horizontal row, shoulder press, a pull down, calf raise, and a crunch. Step number five is to create a time frame for accountability. Great, so you've learned all the basics that you need to know for starting a workout program. So now you get to jump in, right? There's one more step and here's where I might lose you. It's gonna take at least one year to see any type of respectable progress. I know you were hoping for the perfect routine that would help you get beach ready in two weeks, but frankly, that doesn't exist unless you have godlike genetics. I sure don't. So let's assume you don't either since you're watching this video. But I'll make it easier. We'll be in that one year mark in no time. Let's break the program down into four three month cycles. Breaking that down further, we can have four to eight week micro cycles or two to three day mini sprints, which are your basically your training days. These are all opportunities to improve so let's make them count with 
small commitments. Start with the first four weeks. Set goals and milestones that make sense for your fitness goal. So here's another example. If I bench press 185 pounds for five reps in three months, I want to bench press 200 pounds for five reps. That's a relevant time frame for most people. A 15 pound increase in that time frame is great progress. Don't discount these smaller wins. These will keep you motivated during the entire year macro cycle. You can make progress indefinitely and record milestones at each phase. Many programs will use periodization, but this isn't strictly necessary. Progressive overload is enough to make gains over time, but you can use this as a plan for future programs as you complete the beginning phases. I won't get too deep into the specifics of exercise programming. If you're interested in more depth and more of an elaboration of these concepts, drop a comment below and let me know and we can discuss that. Keep in mind this video doesn't discuss nutrition, sleep, supplementation, and cardio which are vital parts of a well-rounded fitness program, but I may cover that in a future video. All right, that's about it. Hope you enjoyed this video. I'm going to leave the program down below that you can download if you're interested in that. You're gonna find a gym workout and a home workout based on your preference. You can mix and match exercises. You can reach out and let me know if you have any questions about the program, I'm, I'll be happy to answer those as I can. These workouts shouldn't take you any longer than 30 to 45 minutes max. If you perform them correctly, it should only take you that long. So to wrap things up, let's just touch on what we talked about today. Step one is to decide on a specific goal. The more specific, the better. Step two is to record your progress. You want to make sure that you're making progress on paper so that way it'll keep you motivated long enough so where you can see progress in the mirror. Step three is to start with the minimalist approach. Low friction is better. It'll keep you in the game for the long run. Step four is to choose exercises that work multiple muscle groups so that way you're getting more stimulation within each workout, saving time and being efficient. Step five is to create a time frame for accountability. You want to create micro goals that lead up to your ultimate goals. That way you're racking up smaller wins to stay motivated. If you like this video, leave a like on the video and leave a comment down below on where you're at in your fitness journey. And I'll see you in the next video.